This conference will now be recorded. Oh, never mind. We're ready. If you are. Okay. <laughs> I call this great meeting of the City Commission No Quarter. Shannon, a roll call. Mayor Roberts. Here. Commissioner Trujillo. Here. Commissioner Bowen. Here. Commissioner White. Here. And the minutes will show that Commissioner Gandy was not present. Okay. You will join me. I'm going to uh, ask uh, Pastor Rutter to cover me tonight. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we just come before you now, humbly asking your wisdom, your leadership, and your guidance in this meeting. I pray for your wisdom and guidance on each of the commissioners' lives, and that you would be with each and every one of the leadership that is represented here today. Pray for each and every person as well. I thank you that you give us your mercy and your grace day by day. And I ask also that you would let uh, my request get approved. <laughs> we know that you're good, you're holy, and you're kind. And we just want to ask now that you would be with us, that you would show your love and kindness, that you would be merciful and gracious to each person. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So it's going to send a pledge. A pledge to the United States of America. And to the Republic, which is finished, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the sea of Singapore, the heart of the friendship among the United States. You may be Well, Brother Dave, I didn't know we could get to that specific. <laughs> <laughs> I can get more to it. I mean, it may be a whole new thing for me. There you go. No, it's not. All right. All right. Look at you. Oh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with two changes. Um, we're going to move resolution 112 and 114 to discussion. Will it also be included in the? No. In no, it's not. No, we're just moving it. Okay. Moving them from resolution. From action, action items. Action. 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 But we're, are, we're not going to advertise it at all? Not yet. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> did you hear that okay? I did. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Trujillo? Yes. Commissioner Bowe? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. All right. Okay. Keep going, Your Honor. I know, right? <laughs> I think next time maybe we need to have on uh, who put who placed it on the agenda and who's requesting to remove it from the agenda. Because how would somebody place it on the agenda and wants it as an action item? That's the only reason I'm thinking. Right now, that's. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I mean, I can get the full story on it. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to. I don't want to close the door on somebody that's requested something. And oh, that, uh, that's the only thing. One twelve. I'll take responsibility for one twelve. Uh, it was after discussion with all parties involved with that. Um, we were looking at removing it from the agenda altogether because we didn't feel there was enough. What we could not proceed forward, but we, I felt that we also needed to discuss that a little bit more. So on 112, uh, I'm responsible for moving up, but it was with the blessing of pretty much all of the parties involved. And the other, I asked because we really need to revamp the whole canvas ordinance instead of just a little piece here and a little piece there. And Cost money or to advertise or not do it all at once. Thank you. All right. Uh, you're up. Great. 
I can make a decision to consider minutes of October 9th, 2023. We have a motion second for the adoption of minutes. Any discussion? Correct. Hearing none. Senate roll call. Commissioner White? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Cavillo? Yes. Commissioner Bell? Yes. Okay. Bring them to the earth. Commissioner Staff Report. Ms. Shannon, do you have anything this evening? Uh, Commissioner Bell, I have nothing to report to the staff. All right. Ms. Gessman, do you have anything you would like to add to the night? Yes, I'd like to go ahead and update you on our um, grants. Um, right now, we have received some notice of obligations on some of our grants. They're actually coming in quite quickly. Um, we, I did put in uh, our grant. Well, I'm actually right now, the new grants that we have, the five new grants that we have, uh, they did open the capital outlay system on October 18th. So right now I am inputting those grants. And of course, as you well know, um, the mayor and I will be going on November 9th to go see the legislature in, in uh, the old courthouse. Um, then uh, the grants that we already had that I sent to Dora, we are getting those obligations, the notice of obligations flowing in now. Um, the vehicles for the wastewater and water department, we already received two of those because we had some uh, obligations that came in for those, but now we're getting the other four obligations. We're going to get those in probably tomorrow. Um, we have an IT grant that's for the IT here and in the city for $250,000. Uh, We've already gotten that notice of obligation about a week ago. Um, the animal shelter, uh, I sent in to Dora to ask for notice uh, for that to be obligated. And uh, that was the grant we already had for $148,500. Um, the brush fire truck uh, for three hundred thousand, that was obligated today as well. That we received that. Um, we received uh, a notice of obligation for our heavy equipment for our street guys, and um, I expect our Dodge trucks and our equipment for our police officers. We should have that in the next day or two, also. So all of our, I mean, I've sent in for everything uh, to Dora to get, uh, some of this was state contracts that uh, we got quotes okay. from because it's cheaper than going through CES. And so Dora, uh, she's been helping me to get those uploaded into the state website. Um, some of them I've just gotten approved through CES, depending on you know where we get the quotes from, as far as the uh, vendors, where they where they get me the quotes through. And then, uh, of course, then Dora sends them and gets me the obligated uh, funds. So that's where I'm at right now. Any questions? I was just going to say thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, just for uh, basically uh, information, uh, when you say rather than go through CES, you went to, you went out or uh, a preferred vendor, is that what you call it? Well, we go to our vendor and then our vendor will e either has a contract with the state okay. and they can get pricing through their state contract or they can use the CES uh, wow. contract. Um, sometimes, like with the vehicles, um, they can get, sometimes they can get better pricing for us using the state contract. Okay. Um, what happens is, is Dora verifies that pricing uh, on the state side uh, by the quote that we send her. Um, and then if the price is better through CES, then the vendor is supposed to give us the pricing through CES. Um, but either way, Dora verifies that pricing um, depending on, you know, what, how they, what kind of quote they send us. All right. Thank you for clarifying that so mm -hmm. yeah. all right anything further <laughs> um well i 
I did um, inherit a couple of uh, grants. Uh, one is the ADA grant from that was being done. Um, the sidewalk one? Yes. Okay. Um, and actually, well, that mostly been done by um, the uh, by Dora and Paul. And I did talk to Paul to kind of get a little bit of background on it. Um, my intention is to go to Roswell on the 12th of November uh, for the phone call on that. He, he says basically I go to their office and we do a Zoom call um, to talk to everybody to verify those funds and get those funds. Um, the other grant, which is for the uh, playground or the parks, I'm sorry, parks and recreational. Um, I'm doing a little bit more research because I have information showing that she did the application, but I'm just trying to find out if we got the funds for that or um, where it was submitted. So I'm kind of doing a little research because I don't have all the paperwork. So, no, it's a CDBG grant? No. The outdoor one. The outdoor one. Okay. That one. It's just that Paul and Dora did it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Paul has a PDF of the CDBG. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of pages. Yeah. So, right now, I'm just, I'm still you know, trying to track down some paperwork on our, on our, uh, Recreation, right? To see where where we left off. That that should have something tracked down on that in a few days. Any questions? Hearing that, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Chief, yes, sir. Mayor and Commissioner and Manager, I just wanted to share with you guys our third quarter. A report from July to September 30th. <clears throat> calls of search, we had 4,224 calls. Alarm calls, we had 90, including uh, residential and residential, commercial, and fire alarms. Um, crashes, which is accident, we had 82. Traffic stop, we had 1,070 traffic stops. The citation was 905 citation written. And from the evidence, I'm confiscated legally was two handguns, one rifle, and two knives. And narcotics, 30 fentanyl pills, a gram of meth. And 18 items, um, 15 items were released, such as jewelry, handgun, cell phone, and money. So, but everything is going okay with us right now. So, awesome. Don't say it before. <laughs> hey. Questions? <laughs> Quit sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out there. <laughs> no further losses of the personnel. Further is from two weeks. Well, yes. I mean, I just had one to give him a call today. I guess he's got accepted into the Air Force. So don't know when he's going to get his order to leave. So. But other than that, no, no further. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right, All right, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. So the state came by last week and conducted our PRC inspection, which is what we have to have every year to keep our uh, license to practice EMS. And everything was in order, and we should receive our new license uh, somewhere within the next few weeks. Um, the State Fire Marshal's office should be here sometime in January for a pre-ISO inspection. I've been working on that. I pretty, I mean, I've got pretty much everything in order and ready for an inspection. It's taken a lot of, I don't know if you've, we've had ladders inspected. Of course, our hydrants, um, we've had a lot of stuff to, that has to be up to date and inspected and everything. And I think at this point, I've got everything. So hopefully when he comes in and looks at it, he can say, hey, y'all are good to go. Let's go ahead and get your inspection done. Okay. Um, what, if, good. what if that doesn't occur like that? So the reason he does the pre-ISO inspection is he comes in and he looks at everything that we've got, and then he'll say, hey, let's work on this, this, and this. Okay. 
So at that point, he said if they call and say, hey, we want to come in and do an inspection, I can kind of request and say, well, can we do it in July? Or can we do it and try to set that up? And then he would work with me to try to get us where we need to be. So, uh, but I think for, from previous ISO inspections, I believe I've got everything that they're going to ask for. I'm hoping it's as easy as our PRC inspection, but <laughs> we'll see. Okay. You hope for the best, right? Absolutely. Every day. So, speaking of Candy Cane, I don't know if y'all know Kurt Porter. He was the owner of Candy Cane. Um, Kurt did pass away last week. And his funeral will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Grace Haven Cemetery in Hobbs. It's graveside only. Uh, he did work for the city for 15 years. A lot of people don't know that he was a city employee. So I just wanted everybody to know that. And then um, we are, the fire department is a stage stop for Halloween. And we will start handing out candy at 3 o'clock on Halloween day. So that's all I have today. Um, I will stand for any other questions. <coughs> questions? Mm -hmm. You seem like here, money in Red Table. You, you said Hobbs. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rest Table here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Rest Table <laughs> here. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Commissioner Bowler. Yes. Uh, thoughts and prayers to the Porter family. Little Kurt, good family. So that's a hops and prayers. Um, thank you everybody for coming. Please get out there and eat local, shop local, buy local. You know, we got a lot of uh, construction going around the area. Hopefully, that's helping out our businesses. I know it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm hoping for not too much rain that we can keep our road projects moving forward. But I will never turn down rain. Thank you, Mr. I'm good. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, members of the public, Ms. Cooper is absent today. She's moving in her new home. So. Um, this month's GRT figure, which is for August, came in at eight nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars, which compares to eight hundred and sixty-five thousand last month, nine hundred and thirty-one thousand for the same period last year. So that makes our twelve-month trailing GRT average nine hundred and nine thousand per month. So we continue on pretty healthy GRTs. We will post for the grant writer position beginning next week, and we hope to make a decision as soon as possible. In the meantime, as Kristen said, she's uh, stepped up and taken over those two grants that were pending. Um, at our next meeting, which is not until November 13th, I would like to have a discussion on a permanent solution to the railroad crossing on South Main Street. I will have representatives from the railroad, NMDOT, and our streets department in attendance. Next, we are in the final stages of providing Ms. Willoughby with all the data needed for our audit, and we hope to wind down Mr. Ed Fierro's services to the city by January. We appreciate all the work that Ed has provided for the city. Splash pad update, 95% of the project is now complete, which involved laying approximately 900 foot of new four-inch pipe and installing a lift station. Uh, library repair update, Commissioner Gandy brought that up last time. Master Plumbers did a complete inspection of the plumbing. Okay. Yeah, this is the only negative point tonight. Um, oh, oh. So the bad news is our sewer lines have collapsed that collapsed underground and have extension, extensive damage in the walls. We also had a contractor out there today to look at the doors on the east side, which allow water to flood into the back hallway. But the sewer line fix will not be a cheap one. We're waiting to get an estimate on that, on those pipes there. So 
Those are the above ground pipes in the walls. The ones in the ground are in more shape. <clears throat> DFA has sent uh, our formal approval and certification letter regarding the current fiscal year's budget, and I emailed a copy to each commissioner today. Uh, two, wa two water leaks on Frontage Road by the cheese plant were repaired today. Last week, ARC replaced eight utility bowls at the North Love Street softball field, and the city will be ordering the new lights this week. We are beginning to see the results of the hard work in improving utilities billing efficiencies for our large commercial customers. The utilities billing for the month of October was $608,000 compared to $519,000 the previous month and $486,000 the month before that. The $608,000 number for October does not include the over half a million dollars received from Navajo. So that number is really over a million dollars. Uh, good news regarding the wastewater treatment plant. Today we sent a letter to NMED Groundwater Quality Bureau informing them that all mechanical repairs and actions identified in the correction action plan of August 24, 2022 have been completed. Additional steps to be taken include obtaining wastewater certifications for our personnel and establishing treatment plant parameters. Additionally, the plant is discharging the cleanest water that it has in years, which now qualifies as class 1B reused water. And finally, I just wanted to show commissioners a couple pictures of the edging work that's going on at Chaparral Park by Jason Boydston and the uh, Parks and Rec crew. So a little bit of cosmetic beautification goes a long way. And that's all I have. I'll be happy to stand for any questions that permission may. Questions? Can we still have the uh, budget workshop at all? Yeah. Yeah. On the 31st of October and 1st of November, Ms. Cooper and I are sitting down with each department head to see where we're tracking on each department's budget. We can report back, and if we want to review those findings with the commission, absolutely. We would be happy to, yes. to see where we're doing. Yep. Yes, sir. So, yeah, 31st of October, 1st of November, we're going to do it in house, but then we can share those results with you anytime you want. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any others? Hearing none. Thank you, sir. Sure. Ms. Ball. Hi, uh, in MDOT Main Street project, moving around along, we uh, did some set color concrete inspections um, last week. Um, the color we chose, so everything's, it's not a crazy pink color. So <laughs> we're hoping it looks better than the part on Avenue D. Uh, but the small sections where they can't get the actual stamp to fit in the little <laughs> corners, uh, they're going to actually fill in with just a solid gray concrete. Um, then, um, so planning and zoning had approved a non-conforming structure for a fence and a carport uh, at 819 South Fifth Street last month. Um, Ramirez and Sons has completed West Avenue J from 5th to 7th. Uh, they've started on North 13th. Uh, we're at 13th, Thursday and 14th. They will be starting on that section of it too. So uh, we're looking at possibly starting the lace and base course. They got their stuff very prepped. Uh, hoping to lay some base course in that this week. We <clears throat> don't get too much rain. Of course, you know, the rain slows those construction projects down. Um, so I have, I just want to take that. If you remember the quotes for the magistrate courthouse to put Lovington in the name, well, it'd be under. <laughs> um, if you guys want to let the city manager sign off on that work, we could possibly get it scheduled for November. Have you run this past the county? Because they were actually the one that they're the ones that that, that asked us to do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything from them on this in a while. Uh, that'd be something me and Miranda can run by them. Yeah, if you guys so are okay with it. Yeah, it's our building, so 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> and then I also, of course, you have a note. I have the scheduled uh, ADA and Title VI coordinators here from the state to do a presentation this evening. Um, and I have nothing further unless you guys have some questions for me. Okay. Any questions? As far as our having uh, the Main Street project, how are we as far as on the line? So uh, the contractors, of course, are still behind schedule. Um, as long as they can keep the weather from flooding them out again, they're hoping to get it back on the schedule. Um, no telling. I mean, if this rain hits, it's going to mess up that base change. And that's the problem we had before. Is they had the subgrade ready and we had those. It was a nice lake. There, it was a lake. Nice. Yes, it was. And, and that. That made the subgrade not pass test for over two weeks. The subgrade couldn't pass test. So they just let it dry, or did they have to go in and dig it back up? They had to dig some, and they had to, you know, they did try to aerate it and everything they could to help it dry out. I mean, and said we got sump pumps over there that morning and tried to help them get it all out of there. Any other questions? See, maybe I'm going to back up just a little bit, and I'm sorry. I thought about it while you were walking through all of that. When you have the discussion uh, with on Avenue uh, R on the railroad track, I was over there this past weekend, end of last week, and where that uh, comes to um, commercial, the concrete that is effectively the gutter in that street has severely collapsed and that's a, a pretty healthy dip and since that receives a lot of truck traffic uh, you might add that to the streets department and have them look at it they won't be able to you know it's not going to get put for repair it'll have to be a scheduled repair and then uh, sorry excuse me by the ferguson journal right there well, it, it turns right, into commercial. <laughs> right where Avenue R turns into commercial, there's a concrete section that's designed to be a, uh, a gutter, uh, effectively. But with all of the rain, the concrete is severely broken, and now with the rain, it's been pressed down. It's pretty good. It's, a, it's now a real gutter, actually. <laughs> Avenue R is also one of the ones I was going to do TPF on this. Avenue R is terrible, except we where we repaired thing. the, the uh, railroad tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Counselor. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners don't have anything new. Uh, a couple comments on some of the agenda items, but uh, other than that, we have to any questions. Hearing that, sounds like a new leader. Um, I would like to uh, comment briefly, and I'm not a mayor, and I don't know if I'm prepared to speak tonight, but uh, we had a uh, retreat last Thursday between EDC, the Flemish Main Street, and the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, had a moderator that Flemish Main Street brought in who uh, basically walked us through. Um, ways to increase communication to come together realizing that each entity has different purposes but maybe uh, increase the collaboration between all of them i felt it was uh, very well received by all um, and uh, out of that we prioritized some projects and uh, things that we'd like to see uh, come about in the city he will be preparing a report and we'll have that hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks. That's, yeah, that's the way I understood Two weeks and then we'll talk a little bit more in depth about it. But I want to thank Commissioner Trujillo for coming and adding to that. Uh, we missed Mr. Miranda, but he was uh, unduly processed. <laughs> yes, All sorry. Weeks, so no. Anyway, I hope that uh, we will be able to move to some of these <coughs> concerns. But I want to thank Ludington Main Street for sponsoring that event and hosting it. And I thought it was very well. Thank you. Other than that, that brings us to our public comment time. Uh, so we have to come to the podium.
state your name. Oh, sorry, I don't remember to do that. And, uh, and you can inform us of anything you would like us to know today. And shock, shock. <laughs> Mayor Commissioners, Madam Buffy, on behalf of Welcome to Main Street, I have a few things that I wanted to cover. Uh, you kind of covered everything about the retreat. I will be bringing back a report that will actually be sent to all the commissioners as well as the Chamber of EDC and Main Street Board. So everyone has a copy of that. And hopefully that does throw up some additional conversation. First thing, though, is tomorrow we are doing a brand refresh. We are asking for community input. Um, in particular, our stakeholders and our downtown businesses. Of course, the entire community is welcome to join. It'll be at 6 p.m. in the Lee County Museum Town Hall. And this is specifically for Lovington Main Street's brand and logo and like our slogan, that kind of stuff. Um, but we really want to make sure that we have community input. So please, please come. Um, I also had kind of a couple of questions. Um, the board has asked that we request information on the property at 7 West Central, as well as 10 West Avenue A, as both of those properties were given citations um, earlier in the year regarding the E-Zone and their violation of set ordinance. Um, we also would like a written uh, update regarding the Choice Hair Center. I know a couple of different businesses have brought forth property or business plan proposals, and we just wanted to know where you guys were headed with the uh, Troy Harris Center. And the last thing I have is we submitted a request for Lovington Lodgers Tax for marketing at, um, items, and we have not heard back. I know you guys voted on the on the Christmas tree itself, but our items are not. So we would just like some written discussions on those. Thank you. Uh, my name is Edward Griffin, I'm the president of Lovington. Uh, I'm running for our school board. Some people probably don't even realize that there's an election going on. Uh, it is a local one, it's an off year, and it's the, I think the first one since they moved into the, the November um, timeline. Um, you can already go in the early vote uh, at the courthouse, um, and November 7th is election day. And so I plan to just get up here and make that simple announcement to get more turnout. Uh, but in campaigning for a school board, I've come across a lot of shady business and disturbing stories from teachers and parents about our schools. Uh, in particular, Pam Quinones, the superintendent, has been changing policies nearly on a daily basis in a clear effort to keep me from speaking with teachers. Uh, other candidates are being allowed on campus to address teachers directly, but the new policy is designed to specifically exclude me and only me. The school board is having a meeting this week with the teachers and staff to talk about the election while excluding the only non-incumbent candidate. The public is also excluded from these meetings in direct violation of New Mexico Open Meetings Act. Um, that's learning enough on its own. But after speaking with parents and teachers, seven and parents and teachers who have informed me that this school administration has a strict loyalty policy and will punish staff members who won't show their company line, it starts to become awfully apparent why they don't follow their open meetings uh, procedures. Uh, they want the secrecy, they want to operate without oversight, and I think this culture needs to change. We need transparency and accountability for the school board and the administration. So I've come here to alert the city commission of uh, what's going on here and the public about this. Uh, win or lose, I plan to keep investigating just exactly what our school board and the administration is up to. Because uh, I think all this needs to come to light so that the community can have trust in our school system and that the school system can start working for our kids. Uh, but please just get out and vote. Uh, we need more turnout for these local elections. Thank you. Anyone else? Trick or treat. Yeah, Mr. Trick or treat. No, no, not trick or treat. We're going to have a Halloween celebration. Uh, not a Halloween. We're going to have a praise and worship celebration on Halloween, Halloween evening at Jackson Avenue Baptist Church. We're a safe stop. And uh, we're going to invite everybody in the community. We're going to have hot dogs. Uh, I'm getting cornhole. I don't know what that does. We're, we're just going to use the holes. If you can get one bean bag in the hole right off the bat, you get a prize. So, 
That way we can try and get as many people as possible. We want to take the emphasis off of the scary and move it on to the righteous. So uh, that's the purpose of it. Plus, we're going to be having a concert. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, uh, talk about it if, if it's an action item. Uh, we want to step down the street from 8th to 9th Street. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's what I'm doing this for. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now we have to vote no because you mentioned it. <laughs> I become more specific in my prayer. There you go. Mayor Roberts, Commission, I'm Elaine B. Hill. Uh, for a couple of years, I've noticed here in Lovington, we have had a lot of I guess what you would call they're not mobile homes, they're manufactured homes. And I know this is a, a, a way that people can afford homes with the cost of homes being so outrageous. But I have noticed that recently, uh, well, in, in instance, there was an old home, an old home, and like I say, I old, so I remember these homes. It was torn down. And then we put in a motor home, a mobile home. The mobile home door, front door, does not face the street. So they were able to put the mobile home in on a side sideways. And to me, they should face the street. They were able to put in this with a little bit of space that there was. And I think it's something that we need to look at in code enforcement. I think we need to be making some changes for our community to look better. I think we've, we've, we've always had trailer parks and mobile homes and in this community because I know that we are a mobile community. We are oil field and this is the way it sometimes needs to be, has been. But I think it's time that we look at if our developers want to develop a nice area for uh, mobile home parks uh, that gives them yards and gives them a way of look, looking presentable. I really think it's something that we should look at now. Um, just to be able to put something in and it not, not look to me like it should. And it's just, I know it's something that, you know, there's a lot of things else going on, but I think when we look at Lovington growing, we need to look at this. Thank you. Thank you. I think that, Mr. Friend, I think that was one of the subjects that was brought up in uh, our meeting last week with all the entities was code enforcement. And then, and I spoke up and said, we only have one. <laughs> That's why a lot of times we miss a lot of things. And I don't know how else we could address that where we have more oversight on what things are on because you can't ask Crystal to catch everything. You can't get our code enforcement. They can put up a trailer house overnight. We don't even know about it. And, and in this particular situation, as I understand it, well, the central is legally based. It's legal. Yeah. We would have yeah. to put a new code in. But you're right. And depending on how we do the budget, how we do with the budget, one of my goals is to maybe uh, acquire a second code enforcement officer. She really needs help. She's doing a great job, but stuff comes up every day in this town. It's, it's time consuming. Yeah, yeah. Follow up and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, we discuss it. You know, it's not so much side, side and follow up, follow up, follow up. It just, it just doesn't get taken care of overnight. So, right. And then people get better for a while and then they start to slip back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Any order? Last hand. I see no one move. All right, we'll move on. All right, bring us to our non action items. Uh, Ms. Ball, why don't you? Take the NMDA. I will let oh. them get up and introduce themselves there. Okay, well, 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Wuhan. I'm here with Isabel Benavides. She is the uh, analytics program coordinator for NMDOT. Uh, her program support. And I'd like to thank Ms. Ball for the opportunity to come speak to you guys this evening. Um, go ahead and slide. I believe you have the handouts there on your desk. Great. Um, so tonight we'll be briefly talking about. Oh, Uh, tonight we'll briefly be talking about the Americans with Disabilities Act for the ADA our compliance obligations for LPAs, the ADA transition plans, ADA policy statements, Title VI plans, and uh, what exactly what discrimination is prohibited under Title VI. So the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, became civil rights law in 1990. It prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas that are open to the general public. This is to ensure that people with disabilities have the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. In the Americans with Disabilities Act, you will find that the regulations are broken into five separate titles. Title one deals with employment, title two, public services, title three, public accommodations, title four, telecommunication. Title V is miscellaneous. Title II public services applies to state and local governments. This title outlines the administrative processes to be followed, including requirements for self-evaluation and planning, requirements for making reasonable modifications to policies, practices, and procedures where necessary to avoid discrimination, architectural barriers to be identified, and the need for effective communication with people with hearing, vision, and speech disabilities. This title is regulated and enforced by the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, title 28 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 35, lists the requirements to ensure non-discrimination in those services. In the state or local, if the state or local government has less than 50 employees, they will need to submit a certification letter, an ADA policy statement, and a complaint process is not required, but is strongly recommended. If the state or local government has more than 50 employees, 50 or more, they will need to designate an employee as the ADA coordinator, have an ADA transition plan, an ADA policy statement, and a complaint process. There is an exemption for tribal entities because federal law recognizes tribal sovereignty. So why must we comply? When applications are received for funding, they are evaluated to determine that ADA is being considered. Lack of compliance may result in being ineligible for projects. Uh, entities must comply with federal law. One of the best reasons to comply is to avoid lawsuits. The Department of Justice has a zero tolerance policy. Compliance prohibits public entities from isolating, separating, and denying people with disabilities the opportunity to participate in the programs or services offered. At some point, disability affects us all, either personally or through people we know. If you have any questions while I'm reading uh, any of this information, please. And to teach you have 50, less than 50 employees that are not required to have an ADA transition plan must still comply with ADA compliance. For entities who do have a transition plan, they must include the necessary steps to ensure that facilities and programs are accessible to persons with disabilities. Transition plans need to include the identification of physical obstacles in owned facilities and the non-compliant critical facilities must be prioritized. Plans need to have a description of methods used to make those facilities accessible. Plans must specify the schedule for taking any necessary steps to upgrade pedestrian access and must be updated on a yearly basis. The designated individual responsible for the implementation and maintenance of the plan should be included and should provide all contact info for them. It's also vital that you update information whenever it is changed. Uh, lastly, the transition plan should be integrated into the system. So the purpose of an ADA policy statement is so that information can be made available to the public of the protections against discrimination in services, programs, or activities. It has traditionally been interpreted to be a standalone document. 
LPAs need to have a compliance policy in place and it must include instructions on how the public can submit a complaint, request a modification, file a grievance, and with contact information to the responsible employee. So just a heads up, sure. the LPAs, that's us. We're an LPA. Okay. Just so fair, I don't want everybody to miss that. <laughs> um, so Title VI is covered by two civil rights acts and two executive orders. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, or national origin in any program or activity that receives federal funds or other federal financial assistance. The Civil Rights Restoration Act of 1987 specifies that entities receiving federal funds must comply with civil rights legislation in all operations, not just in the program or activity that received the funding. Executive Order 12898 environmental justice requires each federal agency shall make achieving environmental justice part of its mission by identifying and addressing as appropriate disproportionately high and adverse human health or environmental effects of its programs policies and activities on minority populations and low income populations in the u.s executive order 13166 limited english proficiency requires federal agencies to examine the service they provide, identify any need for services to those with limited English proficiency, and develop and implement a system to provide those services so that limited English proficiency persons can have meaningful access to it. Title VI ensures that protected groups have meaningful access to programs and activities. Uh, protected groups are individuals who are underserved or underrepresented. These are an example here. Minority, low income, women, elderly, children, disabled, and limited English proficiency. Local public agencies receiving federal funds from New Mexico Department of Transportation are referred to as subrecipients. Subrecipients that receive federal funding are required to establish a Title VI program. The essential elements of a Title VI plan should include the following, a non-discrimination policy statement, Title VI assurances, a designated Title VI coordinator with contact information, must have a monitoring and review process, provide a notice of rights under Title VI, a complaint procedure, proper investigation and tracking, documentation of data collection and analysis, public participation, identify and address limited English proficiency, and implement a system to provide meaningful access to limited English proficient persons. Title VI compliance is accomplished when we do the following. Develop policies and procedures to ensure non-discrimination practices and then monitor for compliance, having a complete process, compliance assurances, trainings for staff members, community outreach and education, data collection and documentation. We define proactive and reactive measures by encouraging minority participation in planning committees, providing information in other languages when needed, requiring entities to notify a population about applicable programs and having assurances for non-discrimination in purchasing of services. Uh, and Title VI must be considered in all phases of the project, from planning to construction. Intentional discrimination is prohibited under Title VI. This can be disparate treatment where similarly situated persons are treated differently because of the race, color, or national origin. It does not require bad faith, ill will, or any evil motive. Evidence may be direct or circumstantial. Retaliation is prohibited. Disparate impact situations may not directly or through contractual or arrangements utilize criteria or methods of administration which have the effect of subjecting individuals to discrimination. A proper Title VI analysis involves a pairing of two things, such as demographics and impact or benefit. Recipients and subrecipients are responsible to ensure equal treatment, equal access, equal rights, and equal opportunities. Tools to help enforce compliance include self-monitoring and assessments, complying with on-site reviews, providing assurances, 
and collecting demographic data to engage diverse populations. Our goal should be to prevent discrimination for starts. Our strategy should be to follow best practices through a systematic and multidisciplinary approach so that any issues are addressed early, adequately, and properly. We all need to commit to improving conditions and addressing problem areas. We need to ensure that any data collected is proper, current, and accurate. With proper public involvement, we get up to assist with the decision-making process for our programs and projects. It is helpful to create a trusting and respectful atmosphere. Uh, we want to empower the community and provide a two-way line of communication. We will conduct reviews and evaluations periodically. We want to make sure that you document these efforts appropriately. We also want to make sure that employees and subrecipients attend regular Title VI trainings. Uh, and this link here on the page at the bottom there has uh, Pretty good videos on civil rights that are available on the FHWA website. Um, so, plan submissions are due 2023. Yes, okay. um, our deadline just passed. Um, that email address there is our direct line if you'd like to reach us if you have any questions. I believe we've received Lovington's Title VI plan, correct? Okay, cool. Well, I was going to be my next question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Any of that? I know it was a lot. Uh, thank you. Question. Question. No, it just sounds like Crystal's doing a job. Of it, so. <laughs> We're assuming you are the. No, I am not. Um, so that's where we need to update these plans. I did submit our older ones too, but we do need to update these. And so it is a lot of work to update all these. Um, so we do need to select a coordinator for them. And of course, there will be um, a lot of work involved with this. So that's not something I can do alone. In your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> you still plan on getting your assistant like that you have, you're still seeking. <laughs> this is our contact information. If you have any questions, either now or in the future, please. Jason, any, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Is the Title VI person in a municipality typically in the HR division, or where do they generally? Is, is there no hard and fast school? Or? There's not actually. We've seen people in a lot of different positions designated as the coordinators. Okay. Jackson raised his hand of all <laughs> Well, in our, old, um, in our old plan, it is tied to a position that we no longer have. It was the assistant city manager. That's an old plan. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, you know, that's where uh, I will need help with you guys coming to these decisions on who's going to oversee these things. and. Um, just when we come up with, um, I'm working on getting the ADA plans updated, uh, and we'll work on the Title Five plan or Title Six plans, and when I bring them to you guys, I just need you to. I wanted you to understand what it all was for, so you'd know how to help me. Okay. Okay. But Crystal, on, on your assistant, you still you still are allocated one, right? Yes. Yeah, you just had to feel the position on it. We, we have got a person in mind and he is going to do the hiring process. Oh. Yeah, I just know that's a lot. So, I'll just get some. Anything further? Well, just want to say thank you for coming and presenting that and giving us obviously a heads up of where we're not, you know. So, uh, as you can hear, we've got some more in front of us, and I'm sure we will be contacting you for uh, support and help. So thank you very much. We just really appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate you, Chief Christian. It's thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. <laughs>
Resolution 112, <clears throat> approval of the United Supermarket and City of Wellington Agreement. Um, the reason, as I spoke earlier, uh, we were going to take this off, uh, but I felt like we needed to at least inform everyone what happened on this. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, conversation over the past few weeks. Uh, and we had um, Mr. Rollins, I don't know the other gentleman's name up here. Mr. Hopper. Hopper, thank you. Um, where they were asking the city of Lovington for support and help. And we, uh, and Mr. Miranda then informed us that we were able upon the discussion and uh, a brief discussion where we said that we could use those use uh, some funds from the gas excise tax um, to assist them in creating or helping with the road improvements that would be required. Uh, at that time, we did not have a copy of an approved DOT plan, which we have since um, been given that is approved. Uh, however, at the same time, we discussed there was no uh, dollar figure that was associated with the improvement. And um, since they were wanting an agreement or a resolution that stated what we were going to do, and their request was basically to provide all of that um, in discussions with Patrick this morning, we felt that procurement may not have been, uh, may not could be verified to be followed and keep us uh, clear, you know, or in the clear on this. So I'm going to open the floor to uh, Mr. Randon, to Patrick. Um, we did have a subsequent uh, conversation with uh, Mr. Rollins. He stated that uh, he had requested from the, the uh, landowner, which is uh, Eddie Valencia, and his engineer, which is Claudius, who's come to our chambers a couple of times, give an update on where we're at. He also was the one that submitted the plan to the DOT. And um, he has urged them to go ahead and get some, I don't know that we can call them bids, I mean, that's a, that's a very loose word that we're going to be using um, from several companies to at least get an idea of what that cost for all of the road uh, improvements. And um, if we are pledging 500000 to see, is that going to cover it? Is it going to leave a minor or a substantial amount that is not covered under that and then whose responsibility be for that uh in addition if if uh the discussion this morning was if we are simply repaying uh united or albertson's whatever the parent company is that money can we for sure uh or can we be uh for sure that they follow procurement procedures so that we're covered on that. Right, so it's not a donation, uh, any kind of donation or whatever. So that was a lot of what happened this morning. And then uh, we felt there was no way to uh, get anything further on this agreement. Um, so it was discussed and agreed upon that they were going to receive those again bids before thanksgiving and uh, we would be allowed we would receive a copy of them that would give us an idea of what the total dollar amount was and then maybe we could proceed with the agreement on that so that was my interpretation i will open the floor to the city manager and patrick to anything further that i did not speak of um, no, Mr. Mayor, I think you summed it up perfectly. They are on a little bit of a time crunch. Um, 
They were hoping if we were to take any action via resolution, we could do it at the December 27th meeting, <coughs> which is November. November. November, sorry, which is November after Thanksgiving, because after that, we only have one commission meeting in December. I believe it's on the 11th, and that's it for the year. And these guys are on a, I mean, not that we should go by, you know, their time schedule, but it's, it's kind of pressing. So the next step is to get those three or four estimates to see where we're, where we're at. What's it going to cost to make those improvements? We can always ask for a special <coughs> didn't need to just to come okay. in and if we have to. I think the worst case scenario. The, the thing that I've been trying to keep in mind this whole time is if in fact we have to do these improvements up front, what happens if the project doesn't come to fruition? So this gives us a I little think that's probably uh, part of the agreement. You know, if we come in with our end, they just come in with their end. Well, originally it was going to be a reimbursement to them for doing the work up front. But oh, as Pat exactly. brought up issues, possible issues with the procurement, you know, because they'd be doing the work with their contractor. We want to, you know, we would have to be monitoring their procurement procedure. And that may not be compatible with ours. So Patrick brought up a very good point. So I think we need to take a look at it. I think the first step is to find out what kind of number we're really talking about. So visiting with Crystal earlier today, I think last year's number was in 400,000. Just a quick call, no time to prep. Her guess is it might be at 700. And so there's a big difference between those two. You know, we're talking about 500. There's still a big difference between five and seven. And so it's important to get that number first, and then we can take a look at, you know, where we go from there as far as making sure we comply with the procurement code. And there are some other options, you know, uh, that we could do, uh, and some other things to take into consideration. If we do the upgrades to the road, it may increase uh, the opportunity if United decides not to come in for another entity to take a look at that. The road's already ready to go. You know, we may be in a better spot um, that way, but it's important for the commission to understand what that dollar amount is uh, because there's a big difference between, you know, those two. So I think starting with that number gives us a good, a good point to evaluate our position. And another thing we need to verify with them <coughs> that it was only the main street and it was only the US 82 entrance that we're discussing, it is not the entrance off of Maine just by the apartments. We need to verify that that's, because uh, yeah, they're just saying access to the parking lot where well, there's two accesses there off of Maine, um, you know, North Maine and then the Maine that turns off of the highway. So, you know, we have to be very specific in our wording that it's the US Highway 82 access only. I was going to question is 500 our max? So, well, so 500 is pretty much the number. The reason that number was offered is because originally we were going to reimburse them a year from now. By that time, at the current rate, that, that gasoline tax fund hasn't been touched since 2019. It's currently at 440. So, by that time, it would have been at half a million. So, it's already there. It's under the general fund. We haven't touched it. So, that's, but of course, it's up to the commission if you think the project is worth more. I mean, that's, I mean, don't forget the county did give us money towards funds towards street improvements. And, so. and that was my que other question. How much do we have in that fund? We said 450. Oh, uh, no, the county money? Oh, yeah, no. Yes, about 440. Yeah. It, we get about yeah. between 14 and 16,000 a month comes into that fund from the state. Right. Yes, sir. And one other question I have is, uh, the land been purchased yet? Yes. Yeah, have they purchased it? Because no, I believe within 90 days, the deed to the land. So that's a question I have. Yes, How are their intentions if the land hasn't been purchased? Right. Yeah, because that, that's what that's concerning because the property owner, it, it ups his value. That's invested. Right, he's got skin in the game. Yeah, now and then the, if they buy it, we we're assisting them in regards to this entire project. And I can understand it, but if let's say they don't come in, then the property value ups. 
and uh, the landowner is the one that's going to sell this property with uh, a lot more than what it's currently valued. I think that's uh, something that needs to be done. Yeah. So I was, I was thinking it's only purchase. Yeah. I thought they owned it. I mean, I thought they bought it. That's just my idea. Yeah. I don't know what negotiations are or the status. Or, I mean, what I know is what we've talked about in this room. Great. Right. So, but that is a good point. So. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Bold. I mean, I, that's the same thing I was thinking. Of. United purchased the property, then I feel they're all in. They're all in for it. But they haven't purchased the property waiting on us. They could, they could turn tail six months again. You know. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's, Okay, one of uh, in further discussion with other uh, interested parties, uh, we probably need to designate uh, one person that will be doing the contact uh, with the current owner and any further, uh, I guess, other interested parties. And that person should be in contact and relaying information to uh, Patrick so that if, if this is a time of the essence, then we need to make sure that uh, we have a, a full understanding of what can or would uh, incur from all of that. Uh, all of the items that the commissioners have brought up are things that we talked about this morning. And so, uh, in a discussion with council, he felt that maybe he needed to be involved with uh, all of the discussions. And so, and at least make sure that uh, he's being informed. And so we're gonna, I would ask you to designate someone who I'm, I'm looking at yet to be the lead on this so that there's not several different avenues that, that being uh, proposed and and not related or is it like yes game? The 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 game? Game? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of what I've been doing up until now out of that well I believe that it should be yeah that's just you David but I also believe that our council should be yep. involved also yes, sir. in the hand and if we do pass this resolution at the end of November, we have 90 days to uh, produce a deed. It's only fair, man. Okay. Any further questions? Any further discussion? Okay, so that was the reason that we. I, but I didn't want it to just go away. I wanted everybody to understand what from now to November the 27th, what we are uh, driving to get accomplished and uh, make sure that it's in agreement with all the parties involved. So. All right, let's bring you to our next item, which was the next item of 114. And I think you have some. Okay. I just, I wish we could just redo our whole cannabis ordinance all at once. But we keep nitpicking it and changing it here and this there. And I've had a local judge approach me and say it's not written well and we're open to lawsuits on it and things like that. And, you know, I mean, just do a good overview of it, get it all together, advertise once, pass once. Did you have any exact points of where this is? Because me and Pat not already read it. Anything, but... <laughs> well, that was one of the things that we talked about. If we're going to go make changes, are there other things in there that you guys want the change? commission, you know, wants to look at? Right. So you can, we can go back through and clean it up. I think it, mm -hmm. it was a staff member that wrote it. Mm -hmm. And so we can go back through and clean it up if you want. But in that process, if you have other ideas about what's happened with you know, other, uh, let's say, things that have gone well or not gone well under ours or other concerns or issues, we can certainly put that in. So, right. like a little packet where we can. <clears throat> and we can look at yeah. other cities' yeah, ordinances, kind of yeah. see what you like. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing wrong with 
I don't want to say copying the ordinances, but kind of use that as a, a guide. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Um, all the municipalities around us allow records. So it's not like we'd be standing out differently than anyone else. Artesia, Hobbs, uh, Roswell, Clovis, and Carlsbad all allow it. So. And, and on, on the point as far as being susceptible, um, I think say ordinance gave us the ability to uh, deal with two things. One is, I think, hours of operation, and the other is density. So, in, in my professional opinion, anything that we add to that, and I told you this already, anything that you add above those two is something that's susceptible, especially if it conflicts with state law. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't conflict with state law, all we're really doing is creating another level of an ordinance that we pass and that then we are obligated to enforce. Mm -hmm. So if we're not going to enforce it, we don't have the personnel or the interest, right. state law can, can take care of it. So those well, are Well, I mean, really even important. like you had the, the one the other day about the greenhouse or whatever, like it says this on municipal mm -hmm. residential, and then it says this and they don't mm -hmm. align, you know? So, I mean, we need to clean up all that just at one time. Just, well, that's a, that's a completely different code in with the greenhouse thing in it because yeah. And, and I, I think that, I think I did some research on it. That was from like the 50s. Yes. And, and so what people were doing as far as, you know, greenhouses are, because I think you can grow, um, let's say, uh, roses in residential areas and then sell that for commercial purposes as opposed to, uh, you know, make a bouquet in your house. And so 1950s, probably a lot of, Less people here, a little bit more elbow room between the houses, and so um, yeah, we could go by through and look at it. But there are a number of things in there. If you look at the rest of our ordinances, you know, you can tell that it's, it's not something that actually applies. But having some feedback from the commission about what you like or don't like about it, I think, is a good start. So. I think that was a thought. <laughs> Not think, not that I think that was another item that was discussed in our during our little meeting the other day. It was our ordinances? You know, we have so many old ones and some that need to be. I don't know if there's a grant out there to, to for someone to come in and clean up all our ordinances and plus probably look at this one as well. Maybe we could tackle it all at once and clean up some old and, and you see what applies to us now. You go to our city webpage and you click on certain ordinances. Because I was looking to try to get uh, see if they're PDF or, or whatever. They're actually literally pictures of old type of pages from the 1930s, and that's all that exists for certain yeah. ordinances. But I agree with you 100%. Yeah, because yeah, I know the cannibal is that, that one on that one is trial and error. The whole state mm -hmm. went through that, so that's understandable. But I know that they had some issues that in regards to certain things they can't do. So, as Commissioner Trujillo alluded to uh, the other day, when we all talked about it, there are a lot of things that uh, have changed, and the ordinances and The different way that wire products, I'm just going to use that today. Uh, I have the uh, allowability, the legal ability, the legality, sorry, uh, have changed over the years that since these have probably not um, been updated. So it, it obviously is a priority. Now, to what? level that priority is we would have to discuss but uh, in your in your spare time can we come up with a possible plan to yes. start working on those one of my ideas was to reach out to the municipal league because when i was police chief they have i don't know how many attorneys on staff but they literally helped us rewrite our pol uh, policies and procedures for use of force so i don't know if they're gonna Help us legally, you know, rewrite our whole ordinances, but I think that would be a good place to start and look for a grant maybe to cover this because, sure. as Patrick said, I mean, 
it's it's a lot of money. You're bringing laws. You're modernizing laws, right? Which has to be done, but it has to be done legally. Because we start changing all these things, we're opening up ourselves for, yeah. and they could be ticking time bombs. You don't know, five years from now, get sued on ordinance that you rewrote. And, you know, I agree. I agree. Uh, any further? Anything further? Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Let's take this to our action items. Oh, I'd like to make a motion for ordinance 603, repeal ordinance 551 by Lance Brewery Project. Okay, yeah, motion second. Um, <coughs> this ordinance repeal. <coughs> this is the pre advertised this for the minimum two weeks that was required. It was a letter that we got from the economic development department from the state. They asked us to do this because the liens had been the lien has been satisfied on the drylands brewing company project. And so in order to put it out, they wanted an ordinance to repeal that. So that's what it's for. If there's any comment or question from the public, speak now. Do you need me to elaborate on this? Yes. You're welcome to, yes. I know you're back there. Yeah. Sorry. You were, you were hiding I, today. I was looking into the EDC. So whenever you receive funds from the state, you have to, in order, when you receive it, you have to create an ordinance. And in order, if you've met all your guidelines, they have met the return on investment on this project. So they are free and clear um, for five full years if they did not meet their employees if they did not fulfill what was stated in the contract then they are forced to pay that money back since an evaluation was done at the end of the project and they haven't met all the requirements and now they're no longer on the hook for it so technically it came originally as a loan and now it's considered a grant and now you have to repeal the process okay. so we're good that. all right any questions Commissioner? hearing that shannon Okay, so um, Mr. Gold? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Trujillo? Yes. Well, do you want to wait or do you want to skip, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not resolution 1031. I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2023-108 street closure for Trunk or Street on Jackson Avenue between 9th and 8th Street on October 31st, 2023. Okay, a motion second for the approval of this resolution. Do we need any further discussion? Um, I was like, do you need any further discussion? <laughs> okay, I don't think so. I am hearing that. Uh, Jen and Rogue all open. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Bo? Yes. Commissioner Trujillo? For two hot dogs, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. For a treat. For a treat. All right. I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2023-109 streetlight request East Avenue H. Sure. Okay. Motion and second on approval of this resolution. So I had the request for streetlight on East Avenue H. 216 East Avenue H. Exactly. Um, this streetlight, it's the red highlighted area is where it's being requested at. Um, years ago, uh, the owners installed their own security light. Um, they ran underground electricity from their own home to that uh, light pole and placed the light there. Uh, an old tree has rotted out the wiring um, and destroyed it. So uh, rather than go through the cost of them redoing all their wiring, they have requested the city place one uh, due to the fact that we have no other street light within almost 400 feet of that area. Um, the total area from the nearest street light on Love is actually 622 feet without any street light anywhere in the block area. Uh, the block directly to the south of it um, has one in the center where it should be placed. I did talk to Lee County Electric. The cost is on your agenda if you saw. Um, there will be no construction costs. It's just our monthly fees that'll be on that for them to place two poles, a transformer, and get a new security light there. 
Uh, we are not able to use their pole. The owners were saying we could use that pole, but Lee County Electric says we can't do that. <laughs> and I didn't figure we could. <laughs> Um, but planning and zoning just wanted me to, they approved it um, and just wanted me to make sure you guys had the costs associated with it. Yeah, our, our yard, yard is east of that. Yeah, so our, our, is. that is, that dead ends at our gate to get into the uh, streets and water department yard. What is our typical spacing on street lights? What do we intend to? We, we usually try to keep it at 300 feet or less. We don't like to go over to okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? Crystal, what was the cost? I didn't see it on the agenda here. Okay, so it is, um, it's going to be $9.27 for the light, $3 uh, for the two poles. Um, these are monthly fees, uh, $3.28 for the transformer. So it's going to be 15 uh, dollars and fifty cents added to our monthly electric bill. And usually, most time we have a street, it's usually around nine to ten every time monthly that we add. Anytime we add a street bike, the sense is a little bit more because we do have to put in two poles and a transfer. Any other questions? Hearing them, Shannon? Mayor Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Trujillo? Yes. Commissioner Bowman? Yes. Commissioner White? <clears throat> like to make a, mo a motion for resolution. It's all emergency. 2023 110 300 South Industrial Special Use Permit Request for Artwork. Sure. Okay. We have a motion and second. Uh, yes. Back to Ms. Hall. <laughs> yep, with me. Um, I'm to catch up so you can uh, take the floor right ahead. So um, I had a request uh, for a special use. This carport was built uh, without proper permitting. Uh, the the owner did um, he bought this building, did not know he needed a city permit. And of course, as far as he is, he is 52 feet from the edge of the road with that carport. Did not realize that his property line is way beyond that. So um, he's 16 foot four inches over his property line in the right of way. Um, there are other, uh, he did the red holders that you guys have. The owner actually provided those uh, during planning and zoning. <laughs> These folders go just, uh, it's his letter, his view on everything. He has pictures of other encroachments all along uh, the area. Is he here? Yes. Yes, he is here this evening. Uh, if you guys have any questions for him on his packet he provided. Uh, planning and zoning did approve this with conditions. Uh, so do you have any other questions for what we're looking at? I'd just like to hear something from the business. Guys. Okay. So if you want to come on up and introduce you or something. started raining all the water's coming in through all the doorways. Realized that none of the none of the dirt work had been done right, so there was no runoff anywhere around it. So I did all the runoffs to curb all the water, to curb all the building. Got it all re redone. I decided I put the car for I didn't realize where the city and the state, I mean the city and the and the you know and the county in it. And of course this is what we have now. So uh, taking care of the front, I don't know, the picture doesn't really show better, but I'll take care of the front right away, which is the city's. I made a run off there right towards the road, and I also did uh, the back. And uh, like I said, nothing's been done since night. I think I had it. They said it was the last time it was uh, 
there was any any gun out there was 1958. 1958 was the last time you didn't get anything out there. So there's actually a road. Um, it's actually supposed to run right to the middle of a, a, a pipe yard, right? Mm -hmm. So then around the back, and then Central is not going to be in the box. You think that dog is going to get in. And then everybody else, south south of me and north of me, is all the way up to the light post. You know, it's like a pollution electric pad. <coughs> and I'm actually 30, you can see the picture, I'm like 30, 35. 37 feet from the light post. So yeah. Light post, the car. The carport is further back than anything. If you drive along industrial, it, it's further back from yeah. fences, other buildings, all along there. And basically, all I was doing was trying to protect what I put in the inside. I've done a lot of work on the inside, redone the whole thing. So it looks, looks super nice and also gave love to the deck a little bit. It looks just great because that, that looks just pretty bad. Well, thank you. But uh, anyway, I'm just kind of asking for you know permission to be able to keep that. And like I said, if for some reason they decide to put in a six lane in there, I tear it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was his conditions. It was, you know, that he received the state permit. So, uh, but the state permit, they won't give him a permit for the building until we approve the zoning. So I couldn't sign off for him to get the permit. Yeah, so I actually spoke to the state and they've got my license. They've got everything being that I, I am the GB 98 holder and I built it myself. They said everything's cool. I just need to get a green light from you guys and double it and send it to me. I've had a Daniel Lamb engineer, the carport, and everything. So everything's done by spec. It has to just, it's not pipe out of the ground or you know, stuff like Everything is brand new. So it's all been spec and done and welded by a qualified welder. So, or certified welder. So, yeah, it looks real nice. Too. Yeah, it does. Um, if you've seen some of his overview by. pictures, there, he yeah, swinged yeah. up the area really well. It looks great. Yeah, before and after. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And you've explained the special use permit, uh, the way that works. Yes, that you know, if, if it needs to be removed because we need that right away, he has to remove it. Um, if it if he sells the place, uh, the new owner would have to come in and get the get a new permit because it will be full uh, null avoid uh, if he sells it. And that um, he has to publicly display uh, that <laughs> approval with it. <laughs> Those were the stipulations there. Planning and zone. All the eyes and all the teams. Exactly. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Hearing that, Shannon. Commissioner White. Yes. Mayor Roberts. I started to pull up Commissioner Gandhi just to say no, but I don't know who to say yes. Commissioner <laughs> Bowles. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get in touch. Oh, yes. I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2023 111 approval of RFP City Loving Tinwell Field litigation. Sure. We have a motion. Second. Uh, big manager. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. The city of Lovington is accepting proposals from qualified legal professionals to perform significant evaluative and investigative preparatory work related to matters of oil and gas activity in the city's well field and potential claims under the New Mexico Surface Owner Protection Act and related common law causes of action of the city against entities or individuals involved in oil and gas operations in and around the city's well field. So this is an RFP for qualified legal professionals. Okay, any questions? All right, hearing none, Shannon? Commissioner Trujillo? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Bo? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2023-113 after five invitation for bid sale of lot B in the industrial zone on South Main Street. Okay. You okay? Yeah. So we have the invitation to bid uh, uh, prepared to go out for advertisement to sell this five-acre lot in our industrial park area. We have had an interested buyer. Um, 
holding on for a long time <laughs> to purchase this property. So it would just uh, it would have to go out for bid, uh, and then have a it has a deadline set for November fifteenth. Um, so that would put it at the last uh, November meeting for you guys to award if you approve the advertisement this evening. I'm trying to figure out what it's for that. Oh, so, oh, it's right there where, where they you have put key, that legendary, key. you have key, oh, okay, right and it's we have a 20 foot right, right away there, yeah. and then, and then yeah. So it's one over. yeah, they spent, yeah, but remember, like they spent $20,000 worth of Khaleesi uh, and still didn't bring it up, still high didn't bring it up high. yeah, still, <laughs> yeah. I, I won't question why you wouldn't want to pick a better five acres. But yeah, yeah, that could probably, <laughs> possibly five acres. Yeah. All right. Anything further? Share that with you. Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Tadillo? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Bo? Let me just ask a question before I finish. I think before I. <laughs> It says commission needs to add a minimum price for the bid that will be acceptable. Uh -huh. Oh, did we add a minimum price? Yep. Yes. No, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought it was going to be based on uh, market value. Market value. Okay. Um, have we gotten that that uh, appraisal? No, not that. So um, the only thing I was able to do was speak to some different realtors, and that's where I put the applicable. Cost there uh, anywhere from 15 to 20,000 per uh, would be the minimum um, that I was told should be accurate. But um, we can, I can change the verbiage in this to hold off until we get that cost. Um, it would just put the advertisement out. So. I think that'd be beneficial to both parties. Okay. Also, Crystal, uh, mm -hmm. on the edge of that property, uh, going a little bit south, I think if anybody used to purchase a little bit over, we need, we'd most like to have an easement in there so we can have an There already is. is there, there already one? is an okay. easement okay. that goes to the back section okay. there and down below those other two also. Okay. But yes. Okay. Yeah, we actually, that back lot actually has an access through those between legendary and this one, or I mean between key and this one. And then, of course, the, the whole bottom south part of that back lot is has the access. So she needs to revise her motion based on. Um, we're still doing. Actually, I don't think so because all we're doing is advertising. The only it. They just have since the resolution. Well, they can rewrite the resolution to. Uh, just bid, I mean, right? We're just, we're just advertising for bid. Okay. So, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. so yeah, if there, if you guys yeah, don't have a minimum put in there, we'll just advertise it. What so yeah, we can either deny or and we should have yeah. the yeah, because then if it comes in below the um, cost we get for appraisal, then you know you guys can deny it. Yeah. Is that cool, Patrick? You can do it either way. Yeah, wait and see what we get. Somebody, you know, you may advertise 15,000 an acre. They may have been planning on 10 an acre or 25 an acre. Let's just don't know. So it gives us an opportunity. If you don't like what comes in, then you can go back out and say, here's our minimum. Right. At that time, we have um, some kind of definitive number from uh, an appraisal or something to, to tell us what it should be worth. Okay. Any further questions? Correct. Bob, I'm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as advertise. Yeah. Uh, I'm good with that. Chad, roll call. I just saw Mr. Bolt. Oh, we're waiting on, that's right, I'm sorry, we were already there. Uh, it's just Mr. Bolt, sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. I thought we were still in this guy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the point well taken. And thank you for this. I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Do the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Motion second to pay our bills. Questions? I don't know Yeah, I have a couple questions. Okay. <clears throat> 
is basically what I'd like to know is what it's what it's for. I'm not questioning the amount. I just like to know. Uh, vendor one four seven eight four on the second page, essential electric says wastewater disconnects from basins. Fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. I'd like to know what it's for. Well, I'm going to say it has to do with it. They've been doing a lot of work on the two basins. This was covered under COVID funds. I do know that because I checked with Robert. Okay. Uh, the other one vendor, it's on page five, vendor 14803. So it's a private oil field service. They're doing work, uh, wastewater repairs at numerous places. Yes, sir. And I confirm with Robert, this is also <coughs> covered under COVID funds. <coughs> okay, so it's just a contractor we're having come in and do work for us. What is the. Well, I mean, it includes lift station repairs, so I'm going to assume that's mostly parts. Mm -hmm. um, I can get you detailed uh, explanations. I don't know if this in, in, involves. Yeah, it's platinum oil field services. So, right. And on the next page, we have premium waterworks, and they're doing hydrant work. And right, that's also COVID. So Marty, did you call on this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was awful fishy then. So you are ready to go. Yes. Yes. yes, Premier, Platinum, Dash Electric, they're all outside contractors used by water and wastewater. Okay. Yes, sir. And the COVID funds are down to about 150,000. And that uh, Premier was also COVID funds? Is that on page five? Page six. Yeah. Yes, sir. And how's our COVID funding? About 150,000. As long as it's uh, getting things done, I'm yes. all for it. No, I just questioned, I just wanted to know. Yes, sir. See who we have doing work for us. For me. I just have one question for the they master. Uh, who's taking care of the grounds of the master court, all the little flower beds and stuff like that? We have uh, the land has lawn care okay. coming in. We have a contract with them. Okay. Uh, they spray for weeds and they try to keep the grass trimmed down also because it comes up through those rocks. I think they were just out there about three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. I'm just looking at the flower beds and what we're doing here. I don't know if they touch the flower beds. Yes. Any further? Hearing that? Shannon, go over here. Yes. Commissioner Bow. Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. The items of the agenda are exhausted. We are adjourned. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was hoping we'd be a little trigger. See, they're not here. It moves real good.